ever dreamt to go to space one day? Hands up. Most of us. And to Mars? Where well, me too. And that's actually why I have been studying astrophysics since I entered university. And who knows what kind of dangers there are in space? For example, bone losses and lack of gravity that may cause uh, back pains, muscle pains, and your hearts have to pump under no gravity, so it might ha have issues. Some may have the psychological problems being away from their parents, from their families and friends. What else? Radiation. And in fact, radiation is the one risk that persists after landing, after returning back to Earth, because it may be cancer-causing in the long term. Radiation interacts with our DNA molecules either directly or through ionizing the water molecules inside your body. And this will generate free radicals that can further interact with the DNA chains. And this actually happens inside our body all the time. But it doesn't do us any harm most of the time because the radiation doses is very low during the daily life. In fact, we're living in a world full of radiation. It is even in our food. Bananas, for example. It is rich in potassium. And potassium-40 is naturally radioactive. Well, but don't stop eating bananas because potassium is also important for our body, for our organ to function properly. Some are quite scared of going to the doctors for medical x-ray checkup. But how many banana doses do you think is equivalent to one dental x-ray? Any guesses? 50 banana doses. So about the bananas you eat in two months' time. And, uh, well, in fact, taking a flight may also increase the radiation intake. So next time, when you go to New York from Hamburg to visit your best friend, if you have one, and <laughs> you, the radiation dose equivalent to your journey would be about 500 banana doses. That's about 10 dental x-rays. But because of the food we eat, because of the world we're living in, we ourselves are actually radioactive. <laughs> yes, indeed, because we have potassium-40, carbon-14 inside us. And that makes it radioactive in the night when you're cuddling your beloved ones in bed and also when you're sitting here next to each other. But don't panic and please don't run away. <laughs> this level of radiation wouldn't do any harm to our bodies because our cells are constantly self-repairing or even in some cases when they die, our body can replace the cells, the dead cells easily. And this is not doing any harm to us but for the ones who raise up their hands that want him to go to space. The radiation level in space is much higher because of these guys. These are supernova explosions. They're the most powerful explosions of a dying star. And this can send off the shock waves that can accelerate particles with different charges to very, very high energies. And this highly charged and energetic particles may interact with our DNA molecules and cause more damage. And here, you see the difference between a normal X-ray and a charged, highly charged particle interacting with a DNA molecule. Just imagine this. Instead of shooting a castle with a shotgun, you're actually bombarding it with a cannon, and the power caused by these, these uh, highly charged particles is much more permanent. And the damage is much more severe and can be cancer-causing. And these particles, they can travel through space. They can travel through interstellar space and eventually reach our solar system. 
But what happens then? The sun has its own magnetic fields that is basically filling up this whole heliosphere. This heliosphere with its magnetic field is deflecting away and shielding away a large portion of such galactic cosmic ray particles. And this is very effective. What is even better for us living on Earth, for us sitting in this room, is that the Earth itself has its own magnetic field. And this is generated by this superheated, swirling iron core that is 3,000 kilometers underneath my feet. And this movement generates the electric currents that induce this global magnetic field of the Earth that can shield away most of the galactic cosmic ray particles. Also, the Earth has its atmosphere, which is a very effective shielding layer as well. And that is why when you go higher with an airplane, you have more radiation dose intake because you have less atmosphere on the top of your head as protection. But if you go so much higher that you end up outside the Earth's magnetic field, end up in space, you're exposed. Direct, directly with this impinging galactic cosmic ray particles. Not only that, the sun can be very naughty sometimes. The sun has all sorts of explosions, solar storms, solar energetic particles, and this is, can also be damaging to, the, um, to our DNAs up there. So in any case, Space is not a radiation-friendly environment. And now we ask, for the ones who want to go to Mars, how about the situation on Mars? Does Mars also have the protection that Earth does? The answer is unfortunately no. Look here. Earth has its magnetic field shielding away this energetic charged particles. But Mars only have these little blobs of magnetic field. It's very weak and very localized. And it's actually the fossilized magnetic field that's left over from the ancient Mars magnet dynamo, which had died out a long time ago, unfortunately. And that's actually going to be the future of Earth, by the way. And <laughs> lack, lacking the magnetic fields, and also lacking a good thick protection of the atmosphere. Mars is very fragile against the space radiation. So going to Mars is probably not going to be beneficial for, for your long-term health, but why, after all what I've been telling you, after all this threatening and the risks of traveling to Mars, we're still trying, the scientists are still trying hard to make it possible for manned missions to Mars. And why do Matt Damon and his team want to go to Mars? <laughs> the answer is simply because they can. Mars is our neighbor planet. Considering the orbit of the two planets around the sun, it takes only about 500 days going and returning and you have to stay for about 400 days for a good connection to come back. And the total duration is only about 900 days, and this is nothing at the space mission. Mind you, the Rosetta took 12 years to meet a comet, and this is totally doable. Not only that, Mars has an environment that is quite similar to some places on Earth. Look here, I've got two pictures. One is taken on the surface of Mars and one in Morocco. Who thinks the right one is taken on the surface of Mars? Hands up. And who thinks the left one instead is on Mars? Well, more people. <laughs> well, in fact, the right one is taken on the surface of Mars by curiosity lately, and the left one is in Morocco. But they really look alike. So if one day we ever wanted to, if one day you ever 
end up on Mars, you wouldn't see something that is completely different to you. <laughs> and also during the day, the temperature can be good, 20, 30 degrees during the daytime. One of the most, one of the most significant differences you would expect is the surface radiation, as I explained to you. But what exactly, what level of radiation there on, on the surface of Mars was unknown until only three and a half years ago, until when Curiosity landed. This is a photo of the Curiosity rover before it was launched in November 2011. It has many scientific instruments on board. And here, on its shoulder, right shoulder, it sits our nice little particle detector, which has the size of a large cappuccino cup, American size, not European size. <laughs> and this cappuccino cup is sending us data as we speak right now from the surface of another planet. And this is the first time in human history. And with this data, I have been looking at the radiation environment on the surface of Mars for three years and a half. And I have, I have been looking at this data more and more that I learned that radiation on the surface of Mars is very complicated. It is much more complicated than we thought. Here, I plotted 500 days of radiation data on the surface of Mars, measured by two different sensor heads of the detector. As you can see, that the data varies a lot, and this is caused by several factors. If you zoom in to just a few days of data, you would see that it oscillates day and night. These are not the Martian aliens. These are caused by the pressure change on the surface of Mars. Because we have another pressure sensor head on the rover, we can see the pressure data. It oscillates day and night at Gale Crater up to 10%. This pressure change actually is varying the shielding effect of this very thin atmosphere on Mars. And the same thing happens at a seasonal level because Mars has this icy carbon dioxide um, polar cap, and this will change the pressure during the summer and winter. And this will also contribute to the long-term variation of the dose rates we measure. But what is mostly dominating in the long term is the solar modulation. What does that mean? It means that, yes, the solar magnetic field, the heliospheric magnetic field, is acting as a shielding effect towards this incoming galactic cosmic ray particles. But this is not constant, neither in time nor in space. The heliosphere is very dynamic, and it varies a lot from different location to location. And the sun has all sorts of activities changing the heliospheric magnetic fields. This is driving the evolving, constant evolving of variation of the do radiation dose on Mars. And also, you see the spikes here. These are the direct solar events hitting Mars and being seen by our radiation detector. So these are really a lot happening on the surface of Mars. So for the ones who are still thinking to go to Mars for your next holiday, this is my Martian travel guide for you. The sun has an 11-year solar cycle. Go there during the solar maximum. When the solar magnetic field is strongest, you would gain most protection from the solar magnetic fields against the galactic cosmic particles. But please watch out those dangerous solar events. And scientists, space scientists, can provide you this space weather forecasts because we have multi spacecraft observations, complicated modeling that can tell you when there's a solar event coming and where it is heading to and what kind of energies you expect to see. And in this case, you can hide into your urgent shutter inside your spacecraft to go through these solar event times. 
when you're actually on the surface of Mars, maybe you can see the soil, the surface soil, as a protection. Basically, the deeper you go, the more protection you would have from above your head as shielding against the galactic cosmic particles and also solid events. And when you're actually there, send me a postcard. <laughs> and lots of data. That would be the best gift for me. Thank you.